back and in this segment we will be talking about the importance of uh, climate uh, change and knowing about it uh, in light of its importance to everyone it affects everyone whether it's uh, the country's uh, governments uh, businessmen or the average individual so it's important to uh, know uh, about its impact and uh, out of that uh, and through the cooperation between Egypt and Germany the uh, Cairo climate talks was launched in 2011 and ever since then uh, several sessions were, are uh, frequently held and the 53rd session was held uh, in, under uh, the uh, title of uh, the digital knowledge itself and knowing more about it uh, I'm happy to have with me Mr. Simon Brombeis and he's uh, the head of the cultural education and science at the German embassy in Cairo also I'm happy to have with me Dr. Amr Ramzi and he's an associate professor of marketing and an acting dean of business and economics at a private university. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, Mr. Brombeis, first of all, um, the idea of choosing the topic of digital climate education, open access to knowledge for the climate change mm. capital. And of course, talking about the idea of the massive open online courses, the NOOC. Both of them we need to understand. Right. Um, so, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be again <clears throat> on the breakfast show. And uh, Yes, so with this um, event, we really wanted to uh, shed light on a best practice how to spread knowledge <coughs> about climate change. It's, it's as easy as that. And um, the MOOC, or MOOC, as we say, so it's like a cow who says moo, but with a C, mm -hmm. MOOC, uh, is a massive open online course, which means it's a course which is online in the Internet, which is open to everyone. It's for free. It's, uh, you can register and use it. And uh, it's massive because we want as many people as possible to participate in order to use it. Um, it's, uh, it's a course like a bit like at the university, which means you have different uh, topics and you go through them, different lessons. And at the end, you have uh, an exam and you get a diploma from this uh, online course, uh, which you can then use in order to show I have passed this course. And uh, I know about uh, the really the fundamentals uh, of climate change and ways to counter it because this is of course really one of the major challenges uh, of our century um, without which uh, if we don't counter it uh, our very survival and prosperity of humanity will be endangered. Dr. Amra, as a professor, how can we raise the awareness among our students about climate change and its impact other than of course, uh, of course in addition to the courses you're holding? Yeah, in uh, Heliopolis University uh, we have uh, many initiatives. These initiatives are mainly related to the children and how the children should be very much uh, aware and be very much into the uh, understanding of the climate change. This, what I'm talking about, is a national initiative that is supervised by the Academy of Scientific Research and Technology. And through this initiative, we are making it very clear to uh, their kids, the children, that there is a challenge, a big challenge coming from the climate change and how the new generation should deal with this challenge. So this is one project and it is a national project supervised by the uh, uh, Academy of Scientific Research and Technology. There are many other uh, initiatives from the government that we are uh, very much into it, like uh, introducing to the school uh, uh, children and their teachers as well some uh, technical themes and concepts related to sustainable development in general and to climate change. And you are training the school teachers how to use some activities, practical activities that are mainly designed in order to address the uh, sustainable development themes and the climate change. So from a university perspective, this is a challenge and we are making it very clear that we must deal with it in a very precise manner. I just want to add a point when it comes to ICT or to uh, information and communication technology, this is very much related to the same point, which is the climate change, because technology and ICT, when it comes to education, it is very much into being environmental friendly and it mm -hmm. is addressing the idea from the uh, uh, green, uh, healthy lifestyle for uh, all people. Right, uh, talking back to uh, MOOC, 
Mm -hmm. uh, right. So, how can it be? Uh, how far can it be successful in Egypt? And do you expect, um, just as you said, you need massive mm -hmm. uh, people to join? Do you expect more from the Egyptian youth uh, as they are to be interested in sustainable development, mm -hmm. in climate change, uh, the awareness as well? Right. Uh, I'm very how long will it take? I mean, talking about the course as well. Yes, yes. Um, I'm very optimistic that it will have a big success here in Egypt uh, with this event which we had like a week ago. Um, we, it was, uh, you know, a first way to inform the public that this course exists. Um, and um, the people who are coming there come from all you ways of life. You university graduates? There were people from universities, people from um, government, people from uh, civil society. and. Um, I think the very fact that we have now uh, more than 50 of these Cairo climate talks shows uh, the interest uh, here in Egypt uh, by, by many different stakeholders. And um, um, yeah, so um, we hope really that uh, this uh, concept will be um, proliferated and, uh, and used. How long uh, is the course? The course has six uh, main lessons and uh, depending on how concentrated you work on them, takes between one to two uh, hours per lesson. So let's say after 10 to 15 hours, so it, it should hours? be through the course. And the course is, it's not only text, it's also has lots of videos, lots of, lots of explanation, lots of exercises. So it's, uh, it's interesting to actually, uh, when I heard about this course, I'm doing it myself uh, uh, right now. Um, and uh, one point, another factor I think for the success is, uh, we have so many groups of young people um, interested in climate change. For example, we had also on the panel one representative of uh, an NGO called You Think Green, which is a bunch of uh, young people at universities coming together and really mm -hmm. thinking um, if there's one thing we should work on, we should uh, get engaged in, it is uh, climate change in order to spread the knowledge about it and also uh, find ways to, to counter it. Now, um, I understand also that uh, a Cairo Climate Talks extends beyond just the students and mm. it goes beyond that. So would you tell us more about that, please? For sure. The, the idea is always to bring together three uh, groups of people. Academia, which is students and professors. Um, government, we have a very good uh, relationship with the Ministry of Environment and actually mm -hmm. The German Embassy in Cairo and the Ministry of Environment are the main organizers of the Cairo Climate Talks mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, business and civil society, so the private actors. Mm -hmm. And I just talked about uh, uh, NGOs like uh, You Think Green. There, are, there was another <coughs> NGO also participating in the talk uh, based at uh, the American University in Cairo called uh, another nice abbreviation A2K4D. Mm -hmm. uh, Association uh, for uh, Development, um, for Knowledge uh, in was Development. It, was it the recent uh, workshop that was held? It was the recent workshop, yeah. And we so also had... What, what was it about? And uh, tell us more about your impression about the students and how did they perceive the, the workshop? Um, the, the way it worked uh, was we had first a presentation about the course itself by uh, one of the initiators of the course, which is the German Climate Consortium in Germany. And then we had two um, input uh, keynote addresses, if you will, uh, by two scientists, because in this course you have six uh, lessons, as I just said, and each lesson is uh, presented by a famous climate scientist, mm -hmm. uh, mostly from Germany, but also from other countries, from other regions of the world. I think there's one from India, one from the United States. So it's really a broad regional focus as well. And afterwards was a discussion, uh, both on the panel and with the public. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the questions we got, we could really see that uh, people are, are interested in, in uh, not only climate change itself, but also in getting active uh, in order to uh, yeah, spread awareness and uh, think about what can we do in order to survive. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, Dr. Amr, uh, concern... Amr. Omar, excuse me. Mm. Dr. Omar, uh, concerning uh, the, the idea of raising the awareness about uh, climate change itself, uh, how can that be spread beyond the, uh, the students' level to throughout the society? Yeah. Uh, first of all, we are very much into in higher education, blending the uh, challenges of the climate change and sustainable development within the traditional uh, uh, curriculum. 
of mm -hmm. the subjects that the students are studying. So in order to make it uh, very much uh, practical, mm -hmm. we are uh, also implementing what we are embedding uh, in the industry. So we are uh, always switching the uh, academic themes with practical experience. Mm -hmm. by sending students to the industry, by doing some interns in the summer for the students. And all these activities are very much related to the idea of the uh, practical application of the sustainable development and meeting the challenges of the climate change. Mm -hmm. So students, when they go to the industry and when they deal with these challenges in reality, they are very much into being hands-on experience. They mm -hmm. are witnessing, experiencing what they are studying theoretically, they are implementing by their hands. Mm -hmm. So this is one dimension. The university by itself, any university, its role has to do with, uh, of course, serving the community. So we, we go to the community mm -hmm. through the projects that we are implementing. We figure out the community needs and we create or we write proposals for uh, for donors that are related to having some programs that are related uh, in a way or another to deal mm -hmm. with the challenges mm -hmm. of the climate change and sustainable development and by uh, doing so we are very much into creating the awareness and preparing the next generation to deal with the challenges of the climate change Right. Um, talking about the idea, if we want to achieve this, definitely we need the awareness of individuals in general. Mm -hmm. And I think they have their own share to work on this, even during our daily life, daily routine life, any mm -hmm. individual. How can we work on this and what are the most important issues to be taken into consideration? Yeah, this is uh, always kind of these uh, two sides. And what can you do politically and what can the individual do in his, his daily life? Um, it, sometimes it's also called the supply side, it's like what is offered in terms of uh, transportation, and uh, the demand side. So the individual, what can he choose? Can he make uh, his own choice aware choices, awareness. you know, to take uh, products which are, for example, produced in a more uh, healthy, green, uh, sustainable manner, like organic farming, I think, is very big here in Egypt. Um, saving electricity, of course, using the metro more often than the car. Uh, things like this, um, but uh, to be honest, uh, the the big change uh, has to come from a concerted effort by uh, governments, businesses, and uh, In Germany, individuals working together. In Germany, achieved a lot together. in this respect, right? Of course, and uh, just I was talking about the German experience as mm -hmm. well. Uh, the biggest success, I think, in Germany was the so-called Energiewende, which was the transformation of the energy uh, production system. And I think you just had before also. Uh, a guest here talking yes. about energy and, and economy. Um, however, um, also one of the presenters at our event said, uh, this is not a, a way to be copied just, just like 100% by other yeah. countries. We, differs, we paid, course, we paid a lot for this. The other, of course. German uh, citizens paid a lot of this. Energy prices went up a lot in Germany um, because of uh, this. And I think um, the advantage now is that the prices for renewable energies uh, go down so much that it becomes even economically uh, interesting to switch to renewable energies, uh, especially in a country like Egypt where you have lots of sun. Um, solar energy now is actually cheaper uh, than, uh, for example, production of energy by gas. Uh, uh, and uh, so I think, uh, well, right now, also Germany built a lot of uh, gas power plants here in Egypt, uh, the company Siemens. But I think when they finish their service, I think you're ready to move to a renewable energy and uh, I think has a very bright future in this country. Uh. Actually, the Cairo Climate Talks, it's, a, it's um, an event that takes place uh, on a um, base, regular basis and mm. the 52nd uh, session uh, took place in April and, and actually it was about climate and heritage, unlocking the past and sustaining the future. Mm -hmm. So would you tell us a bit more about the, this topic and the various sessions that each time the theme is different in yes. Cairo Climate Talks? Yes. Yeah, so the last time was the first time we um, embarked on a really uh, cultural uh, topic. So we looked at cultural heritage, archaeological sites, and what they can tell us about climate change in the past, 
but also uh, what we have to do uh, so that they remain intact in the future. Because, of course, climate change also affects uh, buildings. They affect the pyramids. They affect uh, lots of sites in the delta, especially where the water is rising. And um, we had uh, also a very uh, good presenter also here on the show on the, a month ago uh, from uh, the NGO, uh, what's, what's it called, uh, National... Uh, Heritage Conservation uh, Association, which uh, kind of their, their aim is to rescue really the archaeological mm -hmm. sites and the heritage sites here in Egypt from, from climate change. Well, of course, it, when it comes to sustainable development and climate change, we also need to work, to work together on the awareness of people mm -hmm. and not only talking about university graduates, but we are talking about children as well. So um, I want to ask about activities or uh, what are we doing for the young children? How can we reach schools, mm -hmm. uh, something like this? Because definitely this will help a lot in the future. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's, this is a topic uh, where uh, Professor Omar can talk you, better yes. about because he has yeah. this uh, great experience with uh, uh, universities and uh, yeah, kids' universities. The government universities. is very much into that, into exactly what you mentioned now. And we have many initiatives. One of the most, I would say, successful initiative has to do with the Children's University. The idea of the Children's University is to equip or to prepare the uh, children mm -hmm. for the dangers or the challenges of uh, the climate change. Uh, and in addition to that, to prepare the kids uh, for choosing their majors, like when you are uh, a young kid and you don't know anything about the university environment, the university culture. Mm -hmm. What age are we talking about? We are talking about from 9 to 15, from 9 years what old What about the kindergarten? Because we always ignore this. Uh, I no, don't know. the kindergarten. I don't know why, but yeah. we always ignore this. In, <laughs> definitely, this is the most important age. Yeah, but frankly speaking... You are speaking, building the, the mind. Yeah, when it comes to the kindergarten, you don't have what it takes in order to understand the challenges of the climate change and the sustainable development. Maybe, but they um, are doing this actually in private schools. They yeah, are but, teaching them this. <laughs> <laughs> but starting from year nine, it is, which is, I would say, very young as well, they are very much into the idea of understanding what you are talking about. And, and part of this initiative is to prepare the students or the kids uh, to select the most uh, appropriate major that uh, is appealing most to them. So th this is a national uh, governmental initiative that is dealing with the, with the career of the kids and at the same time dealing with the challenges of the uh, sustainable development in general and climate change precisely. This is not only the, uh, the single program that is dealing with, uh, with such initiatives, but uh, students or young generation, they all have in their schools uh, projects and programs like individualized projects or programs that are dealing with the challenges of the uh, climate change and sustainable development because it's the, this is a very hot topic by definition. Yeah. <coughs> I think, if I can, if I yes. may, <clears throat> here we have a scientist talking. So I think nine years is really as early as this can start. But mm -hmm. of course, you can start in kindergarten to uh, make children aware how this important the, point, yes. the nature is uh, to make, to give them kind of uh, not processed foods, but uh, fresh fruit and uh, juices and so on. Uh, and I think schools do have a, a, yes, a in, responsibility. In international private schools, to start as early they as start possible. yes from the age of four actually. And uh, for example, they have the Earth Day. They have uh, many of the climate mm. change. It, it is not that important to tell him the definition, yes. but he will know it just as you mentioned by nature. So when he reaches the nine, he will understand what you are talking about. You are just giving him the exactly. definition of what he has studied. Yes. Because children are copying behavior, right? They want to become adults. So mm -hmm. and if you show them a way which is already in the right direction. That's a good thing to do. One of your initiatives is renewable energy and versus green jobs for generations. And it was the topic of one of uh, the mm -hmm. climate talks in March. Right. Now, how can that be maintained? Well, as I said before, um, renewable energy really is a big topic in the future because it becomes now economically rational and interesting mm -hmm. to uh, to switch to uh, renewable energy. Um, Versus Egypt, green I think, jobs. just built the biggest solar power plant yeah. in uh, Aswan. So, so you but see. But the idea of green jobs is different, though. 
isn't yeah, it? but it is the same uh, idea of making uh, mm -hmm. green policy and uh, green uh, mm -hmm. kind of ways to do things yes. economically interesting and economically yes. viable. And uh, of course, you should invest more into research in, in, in green technologies. Um, I think, uh, for example, you know, solar uh, energy is, uh, is now very good, but it still has to be improved. Then you have the whole mm -hmm. question of e-mobility, electric cars, um, housing, we still use way too much energy to heat or here cool our houses with uh, air conditioning. So there's lots of things to do and this is jobs in research, jobs in production facilities. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't have the time to go it's, deeper. It's a big but, thing, uh, it was an entire yeah. event, yes, yes. indeed. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you very much, thank you very much, Mr. Simon Brombeis, and uh, also thank you very much, uh, Mr. Roma Ramzi, thank you very much for uh, being here with us and uh, for being involved in, of course, uh, the environmental issues in Egypt. And I'd like also to thank my colleague. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. Russia. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of our breakfast show. And remember to join us again tomorrow, same time, for more on our show. Till then, thank you for joining us and stay tuned for more coming up on Nile TV International.